you going to see some similar challenges trying to protect the rim tomorrow uh, as you did last night? Yeah, I mean, definitely a different way. You know, teams go about it different ways. Um, they do it differently than Atlanta does, but you know, the whole of um, you know them scoring in the deep paint in, in around the restricted area, they've, they've, they've done a great job with that. What are some ways that the Lakers go about getting in, into those positions? Well, I mean, a lot of times they're going to have, you know, five at times, definitely four playmakers out there of guys that can all put the ball on the floor and create and get into the deep paint, attack closeouts, can get out and transition and attack the paint. Um, you know, they'll do it obviously with, with rolls, with McGee, uh, Kuzma, those kind of guys. Uh, but I think the floor is spaced because they will take threes and then those guys' ability to drive the ball and attack the basket. Is there an advantage, um, even if you're coming off of a game where you struggle defensively, where you're playing consecutive teams that play at the pace that these teams do, or do they do it a little bit differently from Atlanta to, to the Lakers? Yeah, I would say it's to probably totally different, mm -hmm. you know, just in terms of you know how, how they go about doing it. I, mean, I think the styles, um, the way Atlanta plays and the way uh, the Lakers play is, is just, it's just different. But I think the overall theme about playing faster, playing the tempo, playing with pace, maybe playing downhill attack in the basket is similar, but how they go about doing it I think is different. Billy, I get asked this question a lot, so I'm going to ask you to explain it. Who is these people? Is this, is this like you? Okay. Right. okay. <laughs> so, I get asked this a lot. Yeah. It was like you were sitting around at a bar or something. And, <laughs> that okay. too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everywhere. All right. All right. So, I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, Royce asks this every day. And I'm like, just ask Billy's right there. Right. Okay. Um, but, but in pick and roll coverage, you play up as opposed to dropping. What's the advantage of playing, playing your big up instead of dropping your big? Um... Well, well, one is if if you're playing against guards that shoot threes, being back can be, in my opinion, somewhat dangerous in terms of giving up a lot of threes. And I think for us, we've got to defend a three-point line. So, you know, when you're playing against the stuff, Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, you know, guys that, um, you know, can uh, Clay Thompson, uh, McCollum, those guys that are playing off of pick and rolls. When you're back, like now, you're, you're giving those guys opportunities when screens are set to give up threes. That's one thing. I think the other thing, too, is it gets the ball from penetrating. A lot of times when you're in a drop, the ball gets coming downhill. You've got a guy rolling. You've got um, a guard trying to pursue to get over the top. The ball's in the deep paint or in the, in the lane and different things. Now, the drop coverage at times, I think, is very, very good, and it's a, it's a good defense. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. I think for our team, with the way we're built, with length and size, the aggressiveness and the attacking, and at the point of screens, um, being aggressive is is best for us. So there's give and take. You know, obviously, when you're up in coverage, you're vulnerable to giving up rolls to the basket. You're all vulnerable to giving up pocket passes to skip outs. Uh, there's a lot of things that you're vulnerable to. When you're in drop, there's things you're going to be vulnerable to. So I don't think there's like one. Uh, you know, pick and roll defense that you can play. We do some things. I mean, it's not necessarily a drop for us, but we're where a guy's starting back. But we do go back into a drop um, in, in certain screening actions, certain things that do happen. But most of the time, we're going to start up at the point of the screen, and then based on communication, how the floor is spaced, it's going to dictate what that big's going to do in coverage. Uh, this is easy. Go ahead, Eric. Billy, you mentioned the. Um or not mentioned, but we've, we've seen how good Andre is at kind of being able to destroy that pick and roll coverage by mm -hmm. himself yeah. at the point of screen. Yeah. We've seen at times even Terrence be really good at that mm -hmm. and him battle foul trouble and learning the ropes of doing that yeah. as a guard. Like, is playing that big up as much as, as you do you guys do in coverage part of Russell and Dennis struggling with those aspects of pick and roll defense? No. Um, no, I mean, <clears throat> the reason I say that is you know, you have to look at, because there's, there's so many different variables. One is when the ball's coming up the sideline, you like to try to keep the ball pinned on the sideline. Mm -hmm. So there's a coverage for that. When there's movement and the ball gets over the top, okay, like we're not staying up at the level of the screen. That's when we're going into a drop. And we didn't go back into a drop very well. Because when the ball gets over the top, it's really, really hard for the, for the, for the guard to get back on the ball. So that's something where if the guard can really, really pursue hard and get in front of the ball and the big can get back to the big rolling, then that's, that's the most effective way. But that takes both those guys doing their jobs really, really well. Um, and then it requires the other three guys that are in support or in coverage to be in position to kind of give support to those guys as they're trying to handle the ball when it's coming to the middle of the floor. So 
you know, to say that that's Dennis or Russell. No, really, actually, to be honest with you, when the ball's coming, it's the guy that's on the wing that needs to be in there helping to give some support. And a lot of times we got, I think because they were making threes last night, we hugged up too much to our man and didn't get our length into gaps and didn't get, you know, our size into gaps. That's 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 really what happened. I, I think the way you explained it, was that what you're talking about when they're coming up the sideline? Is that what you were explaining? Saying if the balls come up the sideline as a pick and roll, mm -hmm. we'd like to keep the ball on that sideline. Okay. There's going to be times where that doesn't happen and the ball gets over top to the middle of the floor. That's an entirely different coverage. Mm -hmm. That's a coverage where... It depends on is there a guy in the fill corner or is the backside overloaded? What's the communication? What's the call? Because there's different coverages at that point. So I think the communication, the little things, the details of those things are the things that matter. But it requires all five people working on it. I think the pick and roll coverage is not going to necessarily be just the two guys. Yes, they're important, but you know if the ball's coming to the middle of the floor and there's a guy in the slot, that guy can get in there and help and get the big back to his man so the big's not getting behind our head as the guard is trying to pursue. So <clears throat> there's a lot of different situations that happen based on where the ball is. Is it a straight middle pick and roll? Is it on the side and you're trying to keep it pushed? Is it a DHO that's coming to the middle of the floor? You know, is it a, is it a stagger screen? Is it a double stagger screen? Like there's a lot of things that are happening right now that require communication and attention to detail on those little things. So it's not just the guards, it's really everybody that's gotta play a role. Is there like an awareness or I wouldn't even say awareness, like a, like a hesitation when it comes to guards in that aspect in guarding the pick and roll in terms of fouls. Because, you know, having to work over that screen, you can create contact with a guy like James Harden or, or a guy like Damian yeah. Miller. This is what I was talking about last night a little bit, is I think sometimes you try to make it like all this schematic stuff, mm -hmm. and schemes are important. But the other thing, too, is a lot of times it's the detail and the attention to being able to do those things at a high level that needs to get done, whereas it's not the scheme that's a problem. It's the little things inside the scheme that need to get done better. Okay, so you're exactly right. If a really good offensive player is coming off the screen to the middle of the floor and you stick your hand in there, there's a chance you're going to give up a three-point play. So we don't want to do that. At the point of the screen, we try to get our hands back and try to pursue and get back on the ball. Now, where is the ball going? Is it going towards the baseline or is it coming to the middle of the floor? And where is your help and where are the other three guys on the floor, how are they spaced, what kind of communication is being given to those three guys, from those three guys, to the two guys that are in coverage. So the schemes are fine, it's just can we execute them, you know, at very, very spontaneously and quickly, because it's easy to, for me as a coach, sit there and look at the film, put it in slow motion and go, okay, you should have done this, you should have done this, and we don't do it. Can they actually, at those seconds, be able to call out what's happening? And we can do it, we just need to do it at a better level. You guys haven't had, like, a real practice in a long time. Were you right. able to do that today? Not really. I mean, obviously, guys played a lot of minutes. It was a it was a tough flight coming back home last night. Um, so we haven't had, you know, our practices have been somewhat limited, but that's part of it. I think there's probably been some slippage in that, to be quite honest with you. Um, we, we've got to, um, you know, and, and I've kind of, you know, look at myself at this from this perspective just because I think five games ago, you know, we really, I think, had a chance to, 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 to play better offensively. And I've focused a lot on that. And I think the last five or six games, we've been much, much better offensively in terms of our efficiency, total number of points, things like that. But we've also gone the other way defensively. And we've got to be able to put both sides together. And we've had moments where we've played, you know, really, really well on both sides. I thought the, the, the second half against San Antonio, for me, stylistically, that was offense, defense, how I think we need to play. Billy, I wasn't, I wasn't in Atlanta, so I'm sorry if you were asked yeah. this, but um, how good was it to have Alex there on a road trip last night? Yeah, I mean, he's always welcome. We want him around there, the team, so when he can be there, I think it's important for him to be there for him, for our team, and you guys love Alex. Alex is a great guy, and um, so for him to be there was great. Yep. Him and Nerland's practice or any, anything today? Yeah, they did some work today. Nerland was able to get some work, and he's still in the uh, concussion protocol. Every step, every day has gotten better. He's had no setbacks. Uh, Alice got some work in today on the court, which was good to see. So they're both, I think, working to get better and get back. So what exactly was, yeah, Nerland's able to do? <clears throat> Excuse me? What exactly was Nerland's He was on the floor doing shooting, skill work, that kind of stuff, non-contact drill work, just on the floor. 
And then Billy, does he then get evaluated again based on having done that step? And then yeah, there's all go the, he's got to go. He's, he's got to go through dips. So how he responds to that, you know, determines the next step of where he's at. But I think um, uh, since since he's gotten out of the hospital, um, every day seems like it's gotten better. But he's still not out of the concussion protocol part of it. But he's been able to do some stuff on the floor. And I know this is annoying, but um, no, it's never annoying. Eric. No. <laughs> I can't tell you if it's the left side or right side. Yeah, on. Not so much here. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, um, Alex specifically, yes. what did he? Was he involved with the group, or was he to the side like Nerlens? Well? well, no. We what we ended up doing today is we watched film, and after we had film, we brought guys out, broke up into some individual small groups, really just got skill work and shots in. So um, he was out there with Terrence and uh, Dennis and himself shooting. Um, he went down and worked with neurons a little bit, um, you know, together to get neurons some more work in. Uh, it was really all non-contact today. We didn't do any contact. It was more skill development. We worked on some, some offensive execution, that kind of stuff. Um, got them moving around in the half court. Um, so that's really what he, that's basically what he did out there today. But he, he'd been coming in, you know, we've been, he's been coming in to get some workouts in and shooting and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's not like he, this was the first time he's done that, or the first time he's been in the gym. He's, he's been doing that before.